In this video, I'm going to show you how a tool called Unity 3D is a great way to teach algebra, geometry, trigonometry, physics, and computer programming. So what is Unity 3D? Well, it's a free tool that helps anyone make 3D games. Now you're probably thinking there's no way high school students can make 3D games. Well, have a look at these two games made by two of my 13-year-old students. Unlike other education software, Unity 3D is also a real tool used by professionals. From experience, I can say that students know when they're using an education toy versus a real tool. And it's a lot easier to get genuine energy out of students when what they're doing is real. Now let's take a closer look at some of my lessons. So after my first class, which takes about an hour and a half, I've always been able to get my students as young as uh, 12 years old to make this first person uh, game where the mouse moves the camera around and the keyboard lets you walk and jump. Also in that first class, I uh, get a um, hundred cubes to, to appear. Because this is one of the most basic things you can get a computer to do, is to do a hundred or a thousand of the same sort of thing. So this is a great lesson, um, not just because students really like it, but because it means you can teach trigonometry to uh, you know, any level, even at the elementary level. So here's the code that makes that happen. And if we go up, you know, you can show more advanced students this code here, or we go down. You can show students this code here, you know, sign, but you don't have to do that. You can even just look at just this and change these values around and just to see what will happen. So if I change A to 5, it changes the amplitude. If I change B to 12, it changes the frequency. And it's really a lot of fun uh, giving students this assignment because even if they haven't seen any trigonometry at all and they don't have the vocabulary to describe you know, these changes they're seeing, you can still give them this assignment and there's a visual change and they can hop around on the wave and, and do, interact with it. And here's a similar lesson. Um, this Batman's going up and down on a sine wave. This one's going side to side on cos. And here I've just combined the two. And it's really easy to show that in, uh, in programming code. There's plenty of algebra too and uh, like inequalities. So if I jump off the map, if my y coordinate is less than negative 10, then I pop back at the start. There's more geometry and vectors too if you want something to shoot from from uh, how you're looking because the direction you're looking is a vector. There's some physics here too because my, my shots don't have a lot of mass right now to break down this brick wall. So you can change the mass and now my shots are a lot stronger. There's some intuition there you can play with. You can also learn a lot about geometry uh, so here's a free 3D model. Uh, NASA makes all these satellites and their shuttles. They give them away for free, so you can just play with them. Uh, so you can move, move around objects in 3D, and when you do, you can see on the top right your X, Y, and Z changing. You can also uh, rotate on any axis. You have to explain the three axes of rotation uh, if you want. And there's, uh, there's scale as well. You can scale on XYZ. So say this, this uh, shuttle's a little too big, I might make it 30% as big on all scales. And now it might actually be a good size for me to, to play with in my game. So there's a lot of geometry here too. Say I want this uh, crosshair, the blue circle in the center of my screen. Then you have to explain to your students uh, some ratios about the screen. Like say this green box is our, our computer screen and the red is the crosshair we want. How do we know what coordinate to put 
for this top right right here. We need that coordinate. Well, what that's going to be is going to be the screen width, but divided by two, and then the crosshair, the, the picture width, but that divided by two. So you take half of the screen divided by two minus half of the width there. That's how you get the X coordinate right here. And students really like the recursion lesson, which is a math and a programming idea. So this big cube here makes a smaller cube on top of it. Well, that one makes another smaller cube on top of that. That one makes another smaller one on top of that. It's a pretty advanced idea, but it's very visual and clear this way. And this one here, this cube, this bottom cube, made four smaller cubes on top of it and those made four smaller cubes on top of them and it's a very uh, impressive way to show uh, recursion. I've also made YouTube videos that review each lesson. They're designed for people with zero programming experience and they save me a lot of time since I don't have to repeat myself in class and I try to keep each video very short. Unity 3D is free uh, it even runs on 10 year old computers depending on how detailed your game is though. And by the way, the free license lets students sell their game without paying any fees uh, so long as they make less than $100,000 a year and that I'd love to see. The Unity editor runs on Windows and Mac and the game itself runs on almost any system like Windows, Mac, Linux and web browsers like Chrome, Firefox and Internet Explorer. Uh, there are even ways students can share their game online for free. Like any web game, uh, then their parents and friends just click the link and play. To wrap things up, uh, I think making 3D games is a great way to learn about math and technology. And even teachers with zero programming experience can use Unity in the classroom. Uh, just download the game I use that I made in my lessons and use them for interactive demonstrations and from there Avid students can download the game too and experiment. Uh, so that's it and if you're in education and need any help getting set up or have any feedback definitely send me a message.